comedy is tonight's theme as your Sears Radio Theater host, Andy Griffith, presents Jim Jordan in The Troublemaker. Your esteemed father is not about to do an El Foldo. I called again, introducing myself as Adnan Mubarak Sophine, finance minister of Kuwait. He was rushed off again. I began to wonder how many finance ministers, presidents, or other assorted possible clients had ever called and been told to go stuff a cabbage. Made me very nervous about my investment. Our program will begin after this message from your local station. I'm lost in love. Remember when gas stations were closed on Sundays? When long lines drove you nuts? Well, listen to this. A big gas price hike may be on the way. Gas could go to a dollar a gallon. International Motors brings you gas-saving new 78 Datsuns at low 78 closeout prices. Save on the Datsun B210 and hurry in to register for the fantastic ski giveaway this weekend. Three pair of Olin skis and bindings courtesy of Bobo's Rena Ski Shop. No purchase necessary, no obligation, but you must be present to win at International Motors. 2620 Kitsky Lane opens seven days a week. Hey, are you one of those pretty McKenzie dancers from the Bodacious Show? Yes, I am, sir. I sure enjoyed the show. Sure, it's seven times. That Ken Newton on that fiddle and Peter Vin on banjo, something else. And them jokes of Gail Baker, I never laughed so hard. And you dancing girls with them high-kicking, high-stepping routines. And that blue by you number, woo-wee. Thank you very much, sir. See, how about coming out to the truck and I'll show you how to double clutch. <laughs> you jumpers are all alike. Three bodacious at Big Hobson's Historic Riverside Hotel. At 6.45 this morning, Charles Kirby, a man in his late 60s, skips down the outside stairs that lead to his little apartment over a garage, takes a deep breath, savoring the crisp morning air, listens to the birds singing, walks down the driveway, the man with a smile on his face, at peace with the world. He takes out the sports section, flips back to the financial pages, runs down the New York Stock Exchange quotations, and then... Judas Priest. No longer at peace with the world, his face a mask of fury, Charles Kirby stormed back into his house. When Charles Kirby retired, he counted on an upward-headed computer-related company called Extronics to support him comfortably, if not luxuriously. His broker referred to it as a tiger. Well, the tiger had just bit him. Kaufman, George, and Moss. This is Larry Bendel. This is Charles Kirby, Mr. Bendel. What in the world has happened to Extronics? Well, Charlie, here's the way I see it. Hold it, hold it. What right have you to call me Charlie? Well, I know your father. He calls me sir. Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Kirby. You should be. Now, you're going to tell me the way you see it? Well, uh, the truth is, sir... I don't know what's going on with Extronics, and nobody else does either. You've got a gold star, Bendel. Your honesty is refreshing, if not nourishing. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Yes, sir? I am a lone man. I'm retired and no longer young, who is about to take on a corporate giant and bring it to its damn knees. And may the fur fly where it will. And that's just the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Your hosts, Lorne Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson, with stories about love hate, and related things. Richard Whitmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Troublemaker, by John L. Green. Our star... Jim Jordan. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. 
So when Mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Can't believe you owe the IRS that much? Well, when things just don't add up, you can count on a Sears desk calculator to help you add up what you don't owe. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide, then read the figures two different ways. 12-digit display or tape printout. There's a two-memory system that helps ease multi-step problems. Plus, its many extras make it a great time saver. Sears two-memory desk calculator now cut $25, just $99.99 through March 10th at most Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Light it, clean it, and love it during Sears Home Center Sale. With lighting bars that shine. Save $10 on four chandeliers with colonial, transitional, or country mood. Your choice, $29.99 each. And save over 20% on a 15-pound box of Sears laundry detergent. It removes more soil than the nation's leading detergent. So light it, clean it, and love it during Sears Home Center Sale till February 24th at most Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. From Sears, fashion that thins out the storm, the roots the sunshine. Step out, military flare. These double-breasted trench coats get down to details. Choose olive green or khaki tan decron polyester and cotton, sizes 8 to 18. Another fashion winner, the new quilt trim sheared shoulder coat with self-belt. In chino beige polyester and cotton, sizes 6 to 16. Both coats come with an nylon lining. Fashion that stands out the storm, the roots the sunshine. In the coat department at most larger Sears retail stores. This is Andy Griffith. Let me ask you a question. If you were a man facing this big financial crisis, if you were in urgent need of economic advice, the sort you just don't run into any old place, where would you go? What's that? The barber shop, you say? Exactly right. Mario? I come to you because you're my barber, and you claim to know almost everything. What's going on with Extronics? Ah, uh, yeah, I dumped that because I didn't know what was going on either. Well, their plant is in your area, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't you ever hear anything? I'm counting on Extronics to support me in style, and that includes this expensive haircut. <laughs> There's a bar down the block where some of the guys from Extronics show up. It's got a picture out in front of a wild pig with a spear in him, and it's called a bloody boar. You get it? You see that? Mario, bloody... don't, don't explain jokes to me. Or I'll cut your throat with a lady's razor and make it look like suicide. Go on. Well, I just heard grumbling there, so I sold. Oh, thank you, Mario Seville. And now back to you in the studio, Charles Kirby. I returned home to change my costume, and just as I was about to leave for the West Valley to see what I could find out about Extronics, my darling daughter arrived in her usual fashion. Good afternoon, Daddy. Damn it, Carolyn. I told you not to knock and bust in here immediately like an English maid with the paper and the morning tea. I might be entertaining. Oh, you're always entertaining, Daddy. Well, you know what I mean. At your age, Daddy? Carolyn, I'm still strong enough to flip you over my knee and let my right hand explain about respect for your father. Now, what was it you wanted? I just wanted to tell you I'm pregnant. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I suppose... But that's one of the easiest things in the world for a girl to be. Daddy. Congratulations to you, and congratulations to Paul. Thanks. And remind me to congratulate you again in nine months. Now, lock up, daughter. I'm heading for a sink of iniquity in the West Valley. Oh, Daddy, do you have to wear that noisy jacket? Thank you for your prompt reply. Well, the bloody boar turned out to be very cozy. Good drinks, fish and chips... Darts, and fortunately for me, a medium high level disgruntled Extronic employee. Sure. I know what's wrong with Extronics. How'd you know I was with the company? The Extronics ID pinned to your shirt, the Extronics windbreaker, and the Extronics cap. Pretty observant, aren't you? Well, just a shot in the dark. How about Extronics? Sorry, but I couldn't talk about the company to a stranger. I see. Miss? Bring another from my friend here. 
No, 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 a double bourbon and ginger. You know, somehow you don't look so strange anymore. Except for that weird jacket. I stole it off a horse at Santa Anita. Well, what is wrong with Extronix? Actually, nothing's wrong. Oh? Except we've got three pri- vice president, vice president, or whatever they are, who blame each other for everything that goes wrong. And who are these geniuses? Listen, Mr. Horace Blanket. Hinkle, Evans, and France are absolutely indispensable. Necessary. We need them. Now, this Hinkle. A sweetheart. A wonderful guy. And what a sense of humor. You should see the insulting memos he sends off from Hinkle to Evans and France. Oh, does have a ring to it. He does them right after he comes back from lunch. Shows them to us, waits a couple hours, then sends them off. Hold it. Why does he wait a couple of hours? So when Evans and France come screaming in, he's on his way home. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Hilarious. He aren't laughing. Well, I've got stock in Extronics, mm. so it hurts me when I laugh. Yeah, now, the guys in France's department have no responsibility <laughs> to... They have nothing to do, because old Fredo France decides on everything when he decides. It took him three days to decide what kind of paper clips we should use. <laughs> but they are the greatest paper clips. Oh, excuse me. Oh, uh, what's, what's the matter? I think I just swallowed a cannonball. Well, what about Evans? <laughs> He's really bright, and does he ever know it? His problem is he can't get along with human beings. That cuts out a lot of people. And does the chairman of the board approve of these kitty games? How would he know? He's out peddling the product. Oh. Now that I found out why my life savings were being fiddled away, I had to pass the information on where to reduce some good. So I called Extronics. Martha Wilkerson speaking. Is this the office of the chairman of the board? Yes, of course. Well, my name is Charles Kirby. I'd like to speak to Mr. Fisk. So would a great many people. In regard to what, Mr. Kirby? Well, I prefer to explain that to Mr. Fisk. It's a matter of some urgency. Mr. Kirby, what may seem a matter of some urgency to you may be of total insignificance to Mr. Fisk. I suggest you explain this urgency in a letter, and I'll see that it comes to his attention. Thank you for calling. I'd love to kill that lady. And I just might do that. So, I wrote a letter that E.B. White would be proud of. Erudite and witty, but not too witty. And after a few days... Who's there? A relative. Oh, come in, daughter. Well, are you sure the coast is clear? Yes, yes. There isn't anybody in a black negligee hiding in the broom closet? Oh, for heaven's sake. The mail was there, and you've got a letter from Extronic. Let me see it. Oh, don't you? Huh? Well, I don't believe it. It's a form letter. Thank you for your letter. Hmm. Extronics is sorry it cannot answer all communications in a personal way, but rising wage costs, company mismanagement, and rude employees preclude that. Oh, you're making that up. Oh, so I am. In a personal way, but your letter has been filed appropriately. Hmm, they shredded me. Meanwhile, we thank you for your interest in Extronics. Most sincerely, scribbled initials. Well, you can't win them all. Why not? It's just an expression. Hmm, I never use it. Your esteemed father is not about to do an El Foldo. I called again, introducing myself as Adnan Mubarak Sophine, finance minister of Kuwait. He was brushed off again. I began to wonder how many finance ministers, presidents, or other assorted possible clients had ever called and been told to go stuff a cabbage. Made me very nervous about my investment, and I decided to take more direct action. Dad, Paul says that he thinks he can... What are you doing? You first. Uh, Paul has a friend whose uncle goes to the same barber as Mr. Fisk, and maybe when the uncle gets back from trout fishing in New Zealand... Stop, he... stop. Time is of the essence. Well, what are you doing? I'm going to crank myself and get delivered to Harrison Fisk's estate. I don't believe it. Not even standing here looking at the crate? Oh, damn it. 
it, Harry. Don't shoot. Yeah, but who knows what's coming out of the crate? Could be the ultimate blob, the goo from outer space, the totally potent cell. Oh, why can't you read a sports page instead of science fiction? Oh, hold it. Oh, hold it. Okay, mister. Don't make any funny moves. Where am I? And who are you? You're in the outer drive of the Fisk home. And we're the estate patrol bomb squad. I was supposed to be taken inside the gates. Where's Harrison Fisk? When this crate showed up, he and his wife lit out for the Blackwell Hotel. Shall we recrate you and send you back? Daddy! Oh, Daddy, they haven't arrested you, have they? No, and they're not going to. Too many papers to fill out. I think we'd better take this man in. Okay, but you fill out the papers. Sir, consider yourself a free man. Oh, come on, Daddy, I'll take you home. By way of the Blackwell Hotel. Oh, base one, this is Mobile 16. Alert the Blackwell Hotel that an unwelcome man will be trying to contact Mr. Fisk. He is a male Caucasian, about 75. 67. Works every time. 67. White hair, wearing a sport jacket you wouldn't believe. Sort of a two-button rainbow. Take me home, Carolyn. I've got to institute Operation Squeaking Wheel. And what is that going to be? Harrison Fisk is going to think God has declared practical joke week exclusively on him. Sarge, this is Officer Murray. Women carrying babies have been going into Sears all day long. All week long, officer. What? It's baby week at Sears, Murray. A great time for play suits, snap side shirts, play pens, Jenny Lynn baby furniture, blankets, and a whole lot more. Mothers and mothers to be shop Sears all during baby week. Come on, Sarge. How come you know all this? Because my wife and Sarge Jr. are probably at Sears right now. Because Sears has baby buys bundled up. Sears Budget Shop has a vested interest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirts and pants sets in sizes 8 to 18. Styled just right for spring. They're romantic flounce dresses topped by vests. Tunic pantsuits coupled with vests. Also the tunic and skirt smartly finished with a vest. The vest, the season's fashion basic. Lots of exciting print and solid color combinations. So you can be choosy. Invest in fashion. Invest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirt and pants sets in the Budget Shop at most larger Sears retail stores. Darling, I'm a mattress who knows what to wear. Solid color for Kale Sheets and Sears Medley Collection, of course. This gorgeous sheet I'm wearing speaks for itself. The color is called Indian Sand. Isn't that stunning? I wear sheets of royal blue, lemon yellow. Sears has a dazzling selection of up to 24 colors. And the fit? Well, just look. I can't understand why mattresses wear anything but these smooth perma press sheets. Honestly, darling, I wouldn't wear anything else. Sizes from Twin to King in most Sears retail stores and in the catalog. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. It takes a large barrel full of imagination to come up with a scheme that will make somebody listen to what you have to say. Charles Kirby is such a man, which is a good thing since our story's about him. Harrison Fisk wouldn't listen, and so Charles Kirby raised his voice a little bit, so to speak. Monsieur and Madame Fisk, uh, pardon the interruption. Oh, everything is perfection as usual, Emile. The salmon is marvelous. Oh, thank you, merci. But I have just been asked to hand this note to you. Uh, Mrs. Fisk gets all the notes in this family. Uh, this seems to be for you. Oh? Uh, what is it, dear? Your car is not here. It has been reparked at the Acapulco restaurant in Long Beach. You'll like their margaritas. Uh, do you know anything about this, Emile? Oh, they do have very good margaritas. Uh, no, 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 about my car, for heaven's sakes. Well, uh, no, sir. Well, check on it, Emile, check on it. I'm afraid your car's not here, sir. Don't bleep. Harrison. Uh, I am awake. How could I be sleeping? 
It's the burglar alarm. Yeah, I know, I know. Something about it. You go down and ask the burglars to leave. I'm waiting for the estate patrol. And that's how you turn it off, Mr. Fisk. Of course, there might have been a burglar. But there wasn't? Well, just this note on the front door. Oh, thank you. Your alarm system has been tested by Slicky Boys of Poussin Incorporated and has passed. If any of this distresses you, please call this number. Mr. Fisk, I... I ask not to be disturbed. Maybe you'd like to write the quarterly report. Very well. I'll tell Mrs. Fisk you can't see her. Well, wait a minute. What's she doing here? Trembling, since you ask. She's almost hysterical. Well, bring her in. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Now what? <gasps> oh, Harrison. Hey, well, Margaret. Margaret, sit down. I can't sit down. My knees are clenched. Well, what happened? Everything. Everything. That's what's happened. Party Rents wants to deliver a hundred folding chairs, an electric hospital bed, and a portable toilet. Well, there are tree surgeons who want to give us estimates for taking down all the eucalyptus trees. And there's a man with a bulldozer who thinks we want him to knock down the front gate. There's a man who wants to clear the hillside of brush. He looks like Pancho Villa, and he's got a whole army of mercenaries with machetes. There are four, four plumber's trucks. And when I sneaked out the back way and drove off in Isoroku's pickup, the third howdy neighbor was just driving up. I've had it, Harrison. I've had it up to here, or maybe even up to here. Oh, I love you, but you seem to have a lousy karma lately. And I'm thinking of leaving you before somebody has a charity block party in my house. Oh, oh, oh wait, oh, oh, wait, Margaret. I, I think I know what I have to do. It's all right now. It's all right, darling. <laughs> Hello? Uh, this is Harrison Fisk. I, uh, gather you'd like to talk to me. There's a tavern not far from your plant called the Bloody Boar. I'd like to meet you there alone in an hour. I assure you it will be good for you, for me, and for Extronics. <laughs> Kirby. Sit down, Mr. Fisk. Thank you. I consider the way you forced me to come here completely reprehensible. I'm sorry you forced me to be reprehensible. I realize you're a busy man, Mr. Fisk. You're inaccessible. I phoned, and I wrote this very nice letter on my best stationery. This is a carbon. Hmm. Yeah, erudite. Witty, but not too witty. Exactly. In answer, I received this form letter. No. Oh, I begin to sense the source of your animosity. I'd like to shove it down the throat of that snide secretary of yours out there. Now, the reason for all this is that I put most of my retirement money into extronics. And now I see my semi-comfortable life threatened. So I found out why extronic stock is going down. How could an outsider possibly... I talk to insiders. You have three factions here that don't get along. Groups headed by Hinkle, Evans, and France. So your management is divided. Or as today's kids put it, polarized. As chairman of the board, you should have done something about this three years ago. You're quite right. But goodbye, Mr. Kirby. You sit right down or I'll tear this solid gold button right off your jacket. All right. I'll hear you out. But I know the problem. I can't fire any of them. They're too good, too important. And they're also prima donnas, and if I speak frankly to them, they'll quit, and one of my competitors will hire them. Of course, if I don't fire them... Right down the drain. There's no solution. There's always a solution. Let me give you an example of a difficult problem. Once upon a time, an Arab died, leaving his 17 camels to his three sons. Half to the oldest, the third to the middle son, and a ninth to the youngest son. Seventeen's a prime number. It's impossible. Yes, but then a wise man rode up on his camel, and they told him their problem. The wise man thought a moment, then said, Suppose I lend you my camel, temporarily. Now, you have eighteen camels, and half of eighteen is nine. So the older son took nine camels. Next, a third of eighteen is six, and the middle son took his six camels. 
and a ninth of 18 is 2 for the youngest son. And now 9, 6, and 2 are 17. And so this remaining camel, of course, that's mine. And with that, the wise man got on his camel and rode off. Shall I run the camels by you again? Uh, no, no. I, I was just thinking. It's, uh, it's an unusual solution. Well, I have a solution to your problem. And it's a little unusual, too. When I'm through, Hinkle's Evans, France, and you will be one big happy family again. You'd have to be a genius. Well, I do have my bright moments. And I expect to be well paid for them. Yes, uh, right. Uh, but about the camel... Well, think about that for a while. First, I suggest you hire me, and then here's what you do and what I'll do. Good morning, Harry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, gentlemen, I want you to meet Kirby Charleston, Mr. Hinkle, Mr. Evans, and Mr. Pratt. Uh, How do you do, sir? Uh, I, uh, I'll be brief, gentlemen. Benton, Rogers, and Gravatt, as well as Matrix Development, are concerned about the way things are going at Extronics, and they should be. Our dividend is going to be half of what it was last year. Well, half of what? Now, needless to say, needless to say, they believe we're doing something very wrong. And they suggested Kirby Charleston here. He's been a very successful troubleshooter with other companies, and I'm confident he'll do as well here. Now, I want you to give him your cooperation and extend all courtesies to him, because he'll be working directly under me as to the chairman of the board. Oh, well, you won't find any problems in my department. I don't have any trouble. <laughs> Nor do I. How can you be so damn sure? What? Your three departments make up the company, and the company is in trouble. At least one of you must be grossly misinformed about his own department. And I'm going to find out who it is. <laughs> Extronics for three days, asking questions, taking secretaries out to lunch, very pleasant it was too, asking questions and filing the answers away. The fourth day I visited Hinkle, just after his three martini lunch. Good afternoon, Mr. Hinkle. Oh, oh. oh hello. Uh, How was your lunch? Oh, delicious, very tasty. What'd you have? What? To eat. Oh, what did I have to eat? Well, let's see. I had, um... You had veal kidney. Now, do you answer your mail now? I mean, oh, sure, sure. I'll do it now. Never put off till today what you don't have time to do tomorrow. That's one of Fred O. Francis's problems. Can't make decisions. Come to think about it, I ought to write him a memo about that. Yeah. I had veal kidney. How do you know? The shadow knows. Oh, he do. The Hinkle situation was just as I had heard it at the bloody board. So, one down. And the next day, I dropped in on the Evans. A really nice, bright man. Miss Henderson! Where are you, Miss Henderson? Hello, Mr. Evans. Oh, oh, uh, <clears throat> where did you come from, Mr. Uh, Charleston? I came from Ohio. Miss Henderson stepped away from her desk for a moment. What for? <laughs> Guess. Well, that's another one I've got to replace, leaving her desk, women. And what, what was it that Shakespeare said about women? No, no, that's what Sherman said about war. Uh, you know, you're right. Hey, have you found out who's creating the problems around here? Indeed I have. Great, glad to hear it. Anybody I know? You better believe it. I was reasonably sure that I was right about France. But I wanted to check. I dropped in as he was on the intercom to his secretary. And tell National Oxides I'll get back to him in two days. Then tell Henderson at Formula X I'll get to him with an answer in a day or so. And tell Harvey Levick I won't be able to talk a deal this week. I've got to look over all that material he sent me. Now, you've got to put off that meat. I'll get back to you later, you uh, Hello, Mr. Charleston. Mr. Fran. Uh, what uh, can I do for you? Answer a few questions. <laughs> Gladly. Have you okayed the order for the Syndrex Corporation? No, not yet. Haven't had time to look them over. Well, the space and tolerances are what you asked for. Why the delay? I've had other things to do. I'm taking care of it, Mr. Charleston. In a very sloppy way. What did you say? Surely you heard me. How long did Sendrex Corporation guarantee their prices? Now, you look here, Mr. Charles. Today is the I... last day. 
I suggest you call him personally and say yes before you get a 15% hike. I'm a very busy man, sir. Would you mind getting out of my office? Out! I can only say to you what you said to me when I came in. Oh, <laughs> gladly. <laughs> Now the trick was to solve them without losing the company and my retirement checks in the process. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Who would be the skier you most admired in your 2004 years? Well, that would probably be the Colonel. The Colonel? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be. He's an extra crispy little old guy. Little beard. He mm -hmm. is a skier. Fearless skier, as a matter of fact. Oh. If anybody ever calls him a chicken, you know... I get the picture. Mm. As a matter of fact, in the off-season, he used to ski down a big mountain of mashed potatoes. But, you know, Bobo Sheehan from Reno Ski Shop is a good friend of his. As a matter of fact, he convinced his wife, Leslie, to marry him. Oh, uh, yes, the colonel was hobbling around the Bobo store with a broken wing. His leg. Leg, yeah. It might have been his wish for well, What about Leslie? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the colonel heard this muffled voice in this lack of skier and Levi clothing. And Leslie. Bobo. He had bought so much great merchandise that he was about to suffocate himself. And, and she saved him. Took a pair of Olin skis and popped him out like a shoe on. Uh, on a promise that he'd marry her. <laughs> Heartwarming. When did that happen? That was last Thursday. Kids were thrilled about it. Mm. Shop Bobo's Reno Ski Shop, 1200 South Wells Avenue. Okay. I gained 20 pounds in two months. Chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, I never lost that weight either. Uh, with me, it was different. I was climbing the walls, yelling at the kids. I just couldn't live with myself. Mm, neither could Dan, could he? No, not really. He said having a wife that smoked was better than being terrorized day and night. Huh, better a friendly dragon than a nasty dragon, huh? Right. So anyway, I'm back to a pack and a half a day, addicted just like I was. Let's before. hold it right there. The American Heart Association wants you to know that smoking cigarettes becomes a habit, not an addiction. Habits can be broken. Smoking is a matter of choice, not destiny. We can help you quit. You don't have to gain weight or climb the walls. Contact your American Heart Association for a free booklet that explains how to break your cigarette habits step by step. The American Heart Association wants you to know we're fighting for your life. This is Andy Griffith again with the concluding act of The Troublemaker. There are several ways of skinning a cat. At that particular moment, none of them had to be used because only a worried Mr. Fisk was involved. He stopped me in the corridor between offices. Well, I can tell you more about uh, extronics, and I think it's about time to set up a meeting. Oh, good, good. Oh, Hinkle's coming this way. Oh, I'm ready for him. Hello, Harrison. And Mr. Charleston. Well, I'm glad you're here, Mr. Hinkle, because I don't like to talk about people behind their backs. Uh, you mind if I eavesdrop? Drip away. I was just about to recommend to Mr. Fisk that you not be allowed to make any company decisions after 1 o'clock. And what does that mean? It means that those three martinis at the simpering bowl turn your brain into a bowl of minestrone. Oh, wait a minute. Your judgment goes to pot. People tell you things you wouldn't even look at in the morning. You get childish and write insulting memos. This is a company, Mr. Hinkle, not a daycare playground. Oh, now, Mr. Cho, are you trying to call me an alcoholic? I'm trying to avoid calling you an alcoholic. I'll leave it to Mr. Fisk to act on my recommendation. I have more to do, but... I'll tell you something, Mr. Hinkle. You and your three martini lunches are one of the things wrong with extronics. Did you hear that? Oh, every word, clear as a bell. Well, I resent this guy. Oh, I don't blame you. Of course, I have seen some of your memos. Well, I sometimes get in the mood to write a memo. Uh, is it usually after lunch? No, I don't think so at all. Not really. Well, if there's nothing to it, don't let it bother you. I won't. I won't. But, well, he practically called me an alcoholic. Uh, I uh, hope that was a psychic slip. Uh, yes, I, it must have been. I haven't had lunch yet. I, I mean, I haven't. <laughs> and why is that, Mr. Charles? Wouldn't you like to know? You would, and I'll tell you. 
I was planning to play a tape of the phone call in which your attitude toward the president of System 3 Semiconductors can only be described as outrageous. My God, is that who that was? Naturally, Mr. Matsumoto didn't get through to Mr. Fisk. Matsumoto? And he won't call again unless I persuade him to reconsider. Oh, I wish you would. Oh, yes. Very well. Well, I'll just tell him that... Uh, I'll tell him Martha's father and mother died in an automobile crash the day before, and she was out of sorts. I'll say it was her car. I'll go, but please don't play that tape. Very well. The point is, try not to filter out everybody. I got the point, Mr. Charleston, and I'll be more careful. Now, I have already recommended to Mr. Fisk that Mr. Hinkle not be allowed to make business decisions or write memos after his three martini lunch. The whole thing is ridiculous. I'll miss those memos. Uh, it seems to me that's pretty strong, but... Mr. I... Fisk has not taken the recommendation yet. It's an easy solution, which is more than I can say for the problem with Mr. France here. What problem? Mr. France, you've got to do something about that enormous ego of yours. Ego? I? Mr. Charleston, I am the humblest of men. Yes, I know. You're the tops in humility. And considering yourself humble is just another form of arrogance. I consider that pretty insulting. Well, uh, since we're paying for it, I, I think we ought to hear him out. Well, what's that got to do with my department in electronics? I'll get immediately to the point. You and your ego think you're the only ones who can pass on everything. You may be the best to decide, but anybody can order special paper clips. And meanwhile, your desk becomes a hiatal hernia obstructing the passage of vital paperwork. Information and decisions. Now, maybe you don't realize that he often works all night for extronics. I and know, that... I know. Doing things he should delegate to other people. And then he's tired all the next day. But it's interesting you should come to his defense, Mr. Evans. Why not? I don't like the way you're handling this whole thing. You're going to like it less. I'm surprised you back up, Mr. France, when you're the most inconsiderate of the people who work for you. You ride roughshod over your assistants like a Hungarian nobleman. Now, hold it. No. What about Annabelle Potkin? You drove her out of Extronics, and now she's with Rockworth when she's needed here. Have you found a replacement yet? How would you like to step outside? Now, now, take it easy, Eddie. I suppose you think that would prove Extronics didn't need her. Don't you have the slightest feeling for your fellow human beings? Can't you be satisfied being a minor god? You get cooperation you wouldn't believe. I'm not going to take this. Wait for me, Eddie. And you wouldn't have to break in a new secretary every week. I'm coming too. Think about what I said, sir. I'm Hedge. just going to... Eddie, come on. Let's go. <sighs> I just hope I haven't lost my three top men. So do I. Just remember, I have stock in Extronics, too. Now, what would you have done if Evans really tangled with you? I would have beaten the hell out of him. <laughs> Department heads caucused in the executive restroom. Let me tell you one thing, boys. We may have had our differences, and we may have needled each other more than was absolutely necessary, but we have got to get together and get rid of this character. Eddie, would you go in and shoot him now if we all promised to swear you were in Chicago at the time? Well, I'm tempted. And, Harry, yeah, you may have to wait until five for your martinis for a while. I may take up jogging for lunch. I didn't know we lost Annabelle Potkin. Nah, I shouldn't have yelled at her. She's too sensitive. Seems to me somebody found your sensitive spots recently. You could say that. All right. I agree with Spreto. We've got to sign a truce, back each other up, and tell Harrison to wrap up Kirby Charleston and send him back to Benton, Rogers, and Gravette. Yeah, but we're going to have to stop taking extronics for granted. Yeah, we've all been doing it. Yeah, first things first. Are we prepared to tell Harrison or else? I am. I am, too. No, not me. Not me. I didn't go out for lunch today. I thought you seemed friendlier. Oh, wait a minute, Eddie. Now, now, hold it, hold it. We've got to go back to what we used to be. The Three Musketeers, the can-do kids. And it's got to be one for all and all for one. Are we ready? Almost. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you know the old era, but I've been wondering how... Oh, here they come, Charles. You were right. Go ahead. Say anything. Uh, 
And furthermore, these are the men, uh, the men who made Extronics what it is. Oh, gentlemen, I, I'm glad you're here. I was just about to tell Mr. Charlson that we were the team that made Extronics, and we aren't breaking it up on the basis of a fast psychological fix from some corporation medicine man. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Fisk. You agree? Believe me, Harrison, he's not a troubleshooter. He's a troublemaker. Oh, oh you right. can say that again. But everything I said was right. Hinkle was screwing up with his martini lunch. France wouldn't let anything get done in his department without his initials. And Evans was alienating everybody in his radiation fallout zone. Douglas MacArthur was a pussycat in comparison. And that's enough, Charleston. But wait, it's all true. These men don't realize how they've been kicking extronics down the tube by fighting among themselves. I don't want to hear it, Mr. Charles. But you've got to hear no, it. No, no, I don't. Mr. Charleston, you may be very perceptive, you may be very bright, and you may even be very right. I'll have to check with my three right-hand men about that, because they've always been honest with me. But as far as I'm concerned... No, Mr. no, I'm not through yet. My work isn't done here. Oh, that may be so, but all I can say is, out! Hmm, I see. Well, I can't imagine how you're going to survive. Goodbye. Hey, all right. Well, how about that? Yeah. Get one cheer for the chairman. Hip, hip, hooray! Oh, I'm sorry I hired him, but everything was going down, down, down. I, I didn't know what to do, but I had to do something. Maybe there's something to be learned here. I, I just wouldn't have the slightest idea. <laughs> Well, Charles Kirby, a.k.a. Kirby Charleston, it was worth it. Retrieving my car from Long Beach and suffering with the burglar alarms and all the rest of it. I think you've got my management team straight now. Well, the idea was get them all to hate me instead of each other and then get them united in their hate. And you fire me. <laughs> well... They're happy, you're happy, and I'm happy. Oh, what could I say? You said the things to them that nobody could say without upsetting the relationships. Oh, boy, were you frank. I had to be. But they're going to remember. You burned a lot of your criticism right on their... Minds? <laughs> well, yes. And that was quite a number you did on Martha Wilkerson. She had it coming. I guess so. I, um, I presume you were Mr. Matsumoto? Oh, yes, calling long distance from Honolulu. <laughs> It, now, about those camels... Well, a half, a third, and a ninth don't equal one. So the Arab didn't give them all away. Oh! I like to think that I'm the floating camel that solved your problem. <laughs> I have a check here for you, Charles. Thank you. I don't mind saying that while the squabbling was going on, I sold Extronic short and picked up a small bundle. <laughs> but now... Yes? I am happy to say I'm bullish on extronics. <laughs> Keep hearing those people talking. Some really impossible guy was hired by this company. I think it was the one you used to be interested in. Uh, Contronics? Extronics. No, 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 no. Contronics. Uh, or maybe it was uh, Centronics. Extronics, Mario. <laughs> That's what I said. Extronics. Well... He went over there and blistered the whole management team. Ah, rumors, rumors. They said he was an older guy in his 50s. Oh, so they said that, eh? You know, well, I don't know how to put this, but let me tell you something, Charlie. Mr. Kirby, damn it. Hey, sorry, sir. You're going to tell me what? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Kirby, I was just going to say that you ought to do something with your time. <laughs> Oh, I'll think about it, Mario. What would it cost to replace your car's muffler, including installation? Oh, I'd say about fifty dollars. No, wait, forty-five dollars. Could be around thirty dollars. Just about forty dollars. The aluminized fuse muffler is only nineteen ninety-nine. That's half of what I guess. It's hard to believe. On a Cadillac? That's a terrific car. With installation included. Yeah. Muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps are needed, 99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. At most Sears Tire and Auto Centers.
The suit to own, if you could own only one, is on sale at Sears. The $119 four-piece vested is now $89, a $30 savings. The suit, contrasting slacks, and reversible vest make six different outfits. The four-piece vested suit, it should be the suit you own. On sale for $89 until February 24th in larger Sears men's stores. Style, sense, satisfaction. Sears men's store. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Generations ago, families dined by the warmth of the open hearth. Today, Sears rekindles the spirit with its open hearth dining room furniture. Faithfully rendered early American designs and careful workmanship give it an heirloom quality. The satin glow and warm highlighting of Sears open hearth take 26 steps to achieve. There's no shorter method to bring out the beauty of the wood. And like all good furniture, open hearth is made to last for a long time with sturdy tongue and groove and mortise and tenon construction. Choose from 16 different pieces of open hearth at most Sears retail stores. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. to Sears Radio Theater, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. The Troublemaker was written by John L. Green, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our star was Jim Jordan. Also heard were Michael Gelman, Shirley Mitchell, Mary Jane Croft, Ralph Sedan, Elvia Allman, Frank Nelson, Sidney Miller, Herb Rudley, Herb Vigran, and Jerry Hausner. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. CBI.